Yes! There it is. Let's go. All right, we did it. Whoo, 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 whoo. That took a while. All right, let's see. Uh, the first things, first things first, the bottom center of the screen says that we've beaten uh, 37 games in 2024 and 484 since we started doing this in 2020. Those numbers are now outdated. We've now beaten 38 games in 2024 and 485 since we started doing this. Let's go. All right, so let's talk about some of the pros and cons of Final Fantasy V. Um, I have played these in order, so I played, I've played just for some con additional context. I've played one, two, three, four, and five, all pixel remasters, not the originals. And I've played all of the Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VII adjacent, adjacent stuff, so the remakes, Crisis Core, I've played all those. And I have played Tactics. Because those are the ones that I played out of order before I started doing everything in order. But other than that, I've played just 1 through 5. So I haven't played 6, I haven't played 8, 9, 10, any of those. Um, I think this is the best one so far of the Pixel Remasters. The only one I think that comes close that, that gives me pause is Final Fantasy 4 because that game was excellent. But I think overall this game is better. Um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I don't think it's the story. The story is fine, but the story in Final Fantasy IV is real good, and I wouldn't say that this one impressed me on that level. I, I think that this is more like the stories in 1, 2, or 3. They were, well, they, I'd say, say they were better than 1 or 2, for sure, but because those were really basic, but um, but I think the story was just kind of on par with, like, 3, and, um, and it was good. The, the characters were finer, but it wasn't really special like I think 4 was. So it's not that. Um, <clears throat> everything, most of the other things about the game are very similar to 4. Uh, the way the combat works, the way that the uh, RPG elements are very similar, but what really sets this one apart is the job system. Now I know that 4 also had a job system, but this one is much more robust and a lot crunchier. It's a lot interesting. You can really get your hands into it. It's a lot more fleshed out <clears throat> and there's a lot more customization to do now that can be a detriment sometimes you give me too much complexity and i end up getting sick of it uh especially if there's a ways to mess it up which i was worried about with this game for a while but it at the end of the day it is really fun to be able to combine jobs like having a white mage geomancer for three quarters of the game was really fun that was really fun, and I came. I, fe I had a real feeling like I came up with that on my own. That was my own thing. It wasn't some strategy guide that I read. Like I, I did. A, I got a white mage mastered. I got a geomancer mastered, and then I put them together, and it worked well for me. And I really, really enjoyed that. That was very satisfying. Having a black mage summon summoner was kind of a foregone conclusion, but having a monk berserker was really cool, you know? Having a, uh, a blue mage um, mystic knight was cool, you know? Uh, like having those different combinations, that was fun. I really, really liked that. Um, and there's a lot of room for experimentation in there. And I think maybe what really s made it s like really special was that there wasn't really a way to like, or, it wasn't really easy to totally mess up. Like I didn't, I committed to stuff. I looked up a couple of walkthroughs for a couple of bosses. I didn't, I didn't re have, rely heavily on a walkthrough for this game, but I did pull it up a couple of times when I have a boss that was like, I had no idea what to do. Uh, we'll get to that in a second in a little bit more detail. And I would see that people would have other strategies for ha handling these. And it was like, oh, well, I can't do that because I didn't ever master ninja or chemist or whoever. And, um, but it wasn't like because I didn't do that, I'd screwed up and now I need to go grind out five levels of ninja. I had, there were other ways to do it, right? So the fact that it, it didn't, doing it my own way without really using a walkthrough for that part, because I never looked up like what you get for mastering each class or anything like that. I really wanted that to be a surprise. And I think that was r the right choice and it was really rewarding because it ended up like whatever I had at the end, it was good enough as long as I executed on what I had built, right? So because, you know, 
a monk berserker was not ideal for the final boss, honestly. But I made a couple of changes on the fly. It allows you to ha customize things a little bit, and and it, and it ended up being fine. It's not like I digged myself into a hole I couldn't get out of, you know. And some of these old school RPGs, you can definitely do that. Um, so. Um, so I really, really liked the job system. That was my favorite part of the whole game for sure. And the, and and I can't I can't tell you how satisfying it is to go back and look at games like Final Fantasy Tactics that I've played and see that it's very clear that this is the game that that really came from. That all the jobs in Final Fantasy uh, Tactics really came from. Not for unless there's a job system in six. I don't know, but. But it's definitely this is the first game where it's like really fleshed out the job system. This is where the Geomancer came from. You know, this is where the chemist came from uh, and the dancer and all that stuff. I love that. I love that. I wish I had played tactics after. That's why I like playing games in order, because I, that would have been more satisfying then. But I did really enjoy seeing where it began or or mostly started here. So I loved that. Um it makes me a little confused as to why they chose not to make this one one of the American audience ones when it came out instead of 4 and 6. I mean, I know 4 is an excellent game and it's got a great story, but like this is a great game too. I think it's better, honestly. I think, well, it's hard to say objectively, but I enjoyed it more because of the job system. I don't know whoever looked at this and thought, nah, Americans won't get this one. That's uh, unfortunate. Um, and uh, so I love the job system. I thought it was great. I thought the story was fine, but it wasn't really what got me going. Um, not like in 4. Um, and really everything else is on par with the other Pixel remasters. So the art, the Pixel design, the revamped Pixel design is awesome. The music is awesome. All of that stuff. Like the this is a this is a great way to remake old NES, NES and SNES games with these pixel remasters. Just give a little bit of quality of life stuff, update some of the textures a little bit, some of the some of the enemy designs, and, and you know, that's really all you have to touch, right? It's, it's uh, like the map, you, the map is better, like that kind of stuff. Uh, like that, that's, that's the, this is a great way to handle the, the original Final Fantasy games. I love all of that. And I've loved that about all of the Pixel remasters so far. So no change there. The real notable differences are is, is the real no only real notable difference is the job system. I, I will also say um, let's go ahead and talk about cons quickly. Um, there was a part of this game and this has happened with a lot of the Pixel remasters. Um, that uh, there were some areas that I really hated. Now I want to say before I go further into this, this after I beat Final Fantasy IV, I beat Final Fantasy IV. I skipped a lot of the dungeons. I turned encounters off, so I would just rush through dungeons, and I ended up being really underleveled at the end. But I thought, well, that doesn't matter because I can just grind dungeons at the end of the game and get way more XP than I'd be getting here. So ultimately, at the end of the day, it's faster to play it that way. Just skip every encounter you can until you can't beat the bosses anymore and then grind out a bunch of levels rinse and repeat right and that's what i did for the first four final fantasies and especially in final fantasy 4 it was rough because i had to grind out a lot of levels and i got really really bored and frustrated having to just grind out levels at the end of a game and so after I beat Final Fantasy IV, I made a promise to myself that I wasn't going to do that with these Pixel Remasters anymore. So I, I didn't turn encounters off except for a couple of times when it actually made sense because, like, the enemies weren't giving XP or something. Um, and I did really, I, and that really did have a positive effect on my enjoyment of the game because I was able to play it as it, go, as it went. I never really got underleveled. I didn't do any of the, most of the optional stuff. I didn't have most of the summons. Like I still skipped a lot of stuff, like as far as like side content, but I didn't rush through the main content. And so because of that, I think I enjoyed, I mean, obviously I enjoyed the game a lot more as I was playing it. So that was the right move. It did take a little bit longer. I spent nine days on this game. Woof, I don't usually spend that long on, on hardly any game, even longer ones like this one. Um, so it did take longer, but ultimately I enjoyed it more for that. Um, 
so uh, so I I wasn't under leveled, but in all in all, well in several of the pixel remasters, I'll get to this point where this boss is just like, how the actual hell am I supposed to beat this boss? There's no way. There's there's some trick to it. They're countering everything I do, or they're completely insusceptible to damage. How do I get through this? And I'll pull up a walkthrough, and it's like, oh, you have to use a specific spell, or you can't. You can only attack with this character, or whatever. So I, I don't really enjoy those because it's not really about skill. It's just about like trying to figure out like the one thing. And maybe there's an argument to be made that there's a skill there, but it's not a skill I'm very good at, and so I don't have a lot of patience for it. Um, this game had some of that too. Uh, there was a point in the game about two thirds to three quarters through, where there were two areas in a row that I fucking hated. One was the Pyramid of Moor. And the second one was whatever was right after that. The Pyramid of Moor was horrible because uh, they, you didn't have Lena. You didn't have... And she was my monk berserker. She was my big physical heavy hitter. And suddenly they take your char that character away in the game. And who you put on what job is up to you. So that could end up being your cure, your healer, which would have been maybe even worse. Or it could be your big physical heavy hitter, or it could be your summoner or something. Uh, and uh, so I don't like, a game, especially a game like this where there's a lot of customization involved with the classes and the abilities and stuff. And then you just take a piece out for a little bit. It, the whole system falls apart. At least it did for me. It, I really struggled to get through that part of the game, and it was not fun for me. The Pyramid of Moor was uh, rough. It was really, really rough. And then, um, I don't remember what it was after that, but there was, a, there was another part of the game right after that that uh, was, it was, um, oh, it was some, it was, a, it, was a, it was a string of bosses that had very specific nuances to them. Like you couldn't attack physically or something or whatever it was anyway i did, that's that wasn't the big problem the big problem was the pyramid of more so this game did have that one area where it's like ugh, this just isn't fun for me it was like the blight town of this game you know it's like it's like the shitty part you know they're like the the enemies would throw all kinds of status effects on you and it's like okay i can't play the way i normally would I appreciate that the games are trying to mix things up at that point, but for me personally, taking someone out of the party, just there's just nothing fun. That's That kind of challenge isn't fun for me. And so I'm just trying to get through that part of the game until I can have my party together. And then once my party's together, throw whatever you want at me. You know, like you, then you can then you can play around with whatever. But don't take my party members away. I hated that. And that part of the game did affect how I felt about the game overall. Because if that part of the game didn't exist, I would be raving about how this game is kind of perfect. Because that was really the only part of the game that I really hated. But I hated it, and it was long, and it was arduous, and it was taxing, and it was tiresome. And so I, I, I did. I don't like it when the game messes with your party, you know, messes with what you can do or who you have available to you. Uh, oh, I remember. It, I remember. No, it was as bad as the Pyramid of Moore. It was that tower. There's a tower where it splits your party into two groups. Two, two, two groups of two and in one of the towers it's you it's like all physical and the other tower is all magic but it doesn't tell you beforehand and so i got into a point where i was so screwed like i i i had physical attacking only in an area where physical attacking wouldn't work and the only choice i had was I could either restart from a previous save, which was 45 minutes of game time ago, or I could change around my jobs from scratch, move a bunch of stuff around, and try to eke out a win, which is what I eventually did. I hated that part of the game, too. Because, again, when the game splits up your party or takes messes with your party, I've spent all... This is a game where the, it, the customization is highly 
important and very s s delicate. You know, you take one piece of out and the whole Jenga tower falls down, right? And so it did that twice in a row. It did that by taking one of my party members out, a very important party member, and then by splitting my party into two. It reminded me of that part in Chained Echoes. There's a part in Chained Echoes where you have to, your party has to go through an area one by one. And so suddenly you don't have your healer, you don't have your heavy hitter, or, or maybe you only have your heavy hitter and they can't heal. And it's like that kind of thing. And I died, in Chained Echoes I died like, oh, I don't know, 15 or 20 times the whole game. And almost all of them were that one part of the game. And, and I, I hated that. I hated that. And I hated those two parts of the game. And they were back to back. And I'll tell you, at the end of that second part, I was thinking, I don't know, man. I don't know how I feel about this game anymore. Because if it's just going to start doing bullshit like this, then I don't know if I'm going to feel as good about this game as I have up to this point. Luckily, um, that was the last of the garbage. Um... So I didn't really have to mess with it after that. And so that was nice. So after that, it kind of got back to the way it was. And it was fine from that point on. But there was a point in this game late, about three quarters in, where the quality of the game, in my opinion, the quality of the game dipped heavily. It went back up. It ended up being all right. And then the it ended strong. Like the, I, I thought the final boss fight was the best fight in the game. It was extremely difficult, but not... Uh, not insurmountable, just it took me a few times to figure it out, you know, and, and I did pull up a walkthrough and that uh, to figure one of the things out that I never would have otherwise. Um, but I, I really, really enjoyed the game overall. I, th I thought it was a great, I think it's the best one so far. I think it's the best Final Fantasy so far out of one through five. And uh, I hope more people play it now that it's available to Americans. So... Um, okay, all right, that's it. I did really enjoy it. I really, really did. Okay, last order of business. Okay, so we've got our completed games save file here. That's great. Uh, I think we're done here. So last order of business. Um, Final Fantasy V, it's been fun, but we are now going to delete you from our console and never play you again. Yeah, I want to close it, and then I want to delete it. Bye. Thank you. Love you.